Doctors have read it. What was the worst thing you've seen for a patient that another doctor overlooked? Broken neck. No really. So this one guy was brought in with an ambulance for upper airway obstruction. We diagnosed what looked like an advanced throat cancer and did a tracheostomy. After the operation, where you pull and push the neck like crazy. We checked his neck x-ray and a junior asks when did he break his neck. He had a brand new and stable neck fracture. Checking his initial x-ray we see that it was there prior to the operation. After questioning the patient he said that on his way to the hospital the ambulance was in a car crash. No one bothered mentioning it to us when he eventually came in. He only thought he had some whiplash. But he was a few millimeters away from permanent paraplegia. Unfortunately he passed away about 2 weeks later due to the cancer. I work in AMS. We got a call for a female with leg pain. When we arrive on scene. This woman's leg is 3 times the size of her other one. Blue and purple. And she has no pulse in her foot. She fell on ice a few days prior and the urgent care didn't do any x-rays. Told her she had a sprain and gave her a walking boot. In reality, her tibia and fibula were both so badly fractured they were cutting the blood vessels and muscle tissue. She lost her foot. My husband had a weird dimpled spot on his back. Went to the dermatologist multiple times. Was brushed off and told not to worry about it. Derm even burned off a nodule that was bothering him at his belt line but repeatedly said it was nothing and was visibly irritated with us for being anxious. We waited for nearly 10 years before going to another dermatologist, since our experience was so negative. Next derm immediately diagnosed what turned out to be a sarcoma which had 10 extra years to grow. My husband now has a 48 inch scar snaking down his back from the removal of the tumor and the reshaping of his back. I now have months of experience with wound drains, tunneling, bandages, in the laundry that comes with massive wound healing. I would like to take that first dermatologist who was so ducking patronizing with our concerns and shove his face deeply into his own ass. I suppose I have one for this as a resident doctor. We saw a kid in the emerg for difficulty walking. He had been slowly losing the ability to walk over months and also had random unexplained projectile vomiting episodes. Looking at his records, he saw his doctor several times who x-rayed one hip, then the other hip, gave some zofran etc. Turns out on exam he is blatantly ataxic, bad coordination, and can't even stand. Failed all our bedside neurological examinations for cerebellum function. It was obvious to me and I'm not even good at this yet. Did a CT scan. Big ass tumor in his cerebellum. It was obstructing fluid drainage in his brain too. Raising his intracranial pressure and causing the vomiting. Had to call in the neurosurgeons overnight for emergency drain and he went to IQ. Later had more surgery for the tumor. My supervisor got pretty emotional about it actually. Edit. Thanks everyone. The history was that he really declined further over the last few days prompting the ED visit. So he looked really bad for us but I'm not sure what he looked like before. To any med students reading this. 1. Do an exam. 2. It's okay to cry sometimes. Patient was lactating but not pregnant or breastfeeding. Previous doctor told her it was residual from her baby that had been weaned for 14 months. Sent her immediately for a brain scan. Brain tumor. She had surgery a week later to remove it and is doing very well now. Edit. Wow. I didn't think anyone would even read this or I would have explained better tried to sound a bit more professional. I did not do any of the follow up care. She left my office with a referral for an MRI and a referral to an endocrinologist. Who took over care. Also, please, if you are concerned about your health in any way or are not happy with your doctor care, obtain your medical records and bring them with you to a different doctor. Don't solicit medical advice from strangers on the internet that know nothing at all about your medical history. That is very dangerous to your health. I found an obvious huge rectal cancer on a patient who was previously told over and over again that she had hemorrhoids. My best friend was in her late 20s and was feeling constant irritation in her stomach. She went to see several doctors over the course of almost 3 years. And they all dismissed her saying she had an irritable bowel. She would try a new diet every few months. But nothing helped. One day she calls me and tells me she broke her ribs. She didn't know how it happened. But she started having horrible pain and her doctor said her ribs must be fractured. Long story short, 
it wasn't fractured ribs. At some point when the pain became too much to bear, she went to the ER and got a CT. Turns out she had stage 4 colon cancer with 4 inches tumors in her abdomen that were compressing her organs and causing the pain. She died a few months later. She'd been seeing doctors about her symptoms for 3 years. If one of them had taken her seriously and sent her to get to colonoscopy she'd probably still be alive. Edit. Wow. Thank you everyone for the kind words and awards. It's disturbing, but sadly not surprising. To see there are so many similar stories to this. If you feel like something is off with your body, trust your instincts and don't listen to doctors who try to tell you otherwise. For the record this was not in the US. I don't want to say where I'm from to protect my friend's identity. Small country. And she has a sibling who used to be on reddit. Any doctor could have sent my friend to a colonoscopy. But I guess it was easier to write her off. The cancer may have killed her. But the reason for her death was apathy. MD here. Recently was called over by a nurse who told me a patient's bandages were wet as they were bleeding a little. Patient had recently had his leg amputated. We pulled his bandages off and found a spurting femoral artery. At this point the patient passed out. Patient was sent to theaters for an emergency operation. Close call for sure. Once when I was a medical student on surgery rotation. In trauma. We had a patient come in after he fell on the street and bonked his head. Well apparently he had fallen once earlier that day and was discharged when the trauma workup at the other hospital was negative for injuries. We examined him and noticed his eyes were kinda yellow. So as part of our trauma workup, given that he couldn't give a great story and we couldn't be sure what happened, we CT scanned his abdomen and saw his common bile duct was like 3 times normal size. Could drive a truck through it. About the time. Next set of vitals his temp was 103F. Guy was floridly septic from ascending cholangitis which is why he was falling down. Big miss and that is an emergency. Not a doctor, but a friend of my mom's went to an ophthalmologist for an eye problem. During his exam, he asked her, so how long have you had MS? That was the first she was diagnosed. She had been battling various MS symptoms for a couple of decades without a diagnosis. There was a story pretty recently in the hospital I work for, where a cardiologist in the ER was doing a rather difficult night shift, and started feeling lightheaded, dizzy and fatigued, given how intense those shifts are, 26 plus plus hours, sometimes multiple times a week. Nobody thought much of it, and the doctor in question went to catch a quick nap in the staff room. People just passed by him in the staff room every once in a while. But they just assumed the poor guy was exhausted and let him rest. He was dead for several hours by the time someone realized something wasn't right. Young student from, I think, Pakistan. He was complaining about his neck feeling stiff. He went to a doctor some days before and he was told he was having joint pains that would pass with some common anti-inflammatory drugs. When I visited him I saw many of the lymph nodes in his neck were swollen, which probably caused the stiffness, and not painful, not a good sign. Sent him right away to have a chest x-ray that showed a huge mediastinical mass, suggestive of lymphoma. Sadly I don't know what happened to him. In residency I saw a cardiologist miss a steamy, heart attack. By the time the patient came to us. Some of the muscles supporting one of his heart valves had completely died and he was in cardiogenic shock. Basically his heart function was so bad that it wasn't circulating the blood in his body enough to support life. It was awful. Happily he made it through though. One that comes to mind is when I was a resident. The ED doctor wanted to admit a mild septic patient with a UT. I review her labs. And knowing that she is a diabetic. It was obvious florid DKA. Diabetic ketoacidosis. That kind of admission typically goes straight to the IQ to get insulin via a drip and aggressive IV fluid rehydration. She was just in the ED hallway with no medications at all looking like crap. Speaking as a patient. When I was a kid, my eyes were hurting and my dad kept taking me back to the same eye doctor. Who insisted that the problem was that I wasn't cleaning my contacts properly and just kept giving me harsher and harsher chemicals to wash them in. Got to the point where I couldn't open my eyes fully in a room with the lights on, and I hadn't worn contacts for months. Finally, after a year, my mom forced my dad to take me to a different doctor. Literally he met me in the waiting room, 
looked at me with his naked eye, and said, you have a raging eye infection, a month of medicine and the infection was gone, but there was so much scarring and damage it was 20 years before I could wear contacts again, edit, getting this question a lot, I was a kid at the time, I didn't know the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist, and it was over two decades ago, I do not remember if I ever knew, sorry I can't tell you. A lot of people are saying that optometrists are basically just for routine checkups and getting glasses or contacts, and if something is actually wrong and you need a diagnosis, go to an ophthalmologist. Update. I'm now getting pushback on this. 2. Apparently the distinction between optometrist and ophthalmologist is less drastic than some of the earlier people implied. Again. The only thing I personally recommend is that you do your own research and come to your own conclusions. I don't personally know if that's true or not, but feel free to do some research. It's a thing several people have said now. I've only gotten the one troll so far showing up to tell me he is 100% sure I'm lying because that's clearly what people do for fake internet points and he will not have it. Which seems low for a reddit post. So I'll take that as my good fortune of the day. Neurologist sent patient to R.E.D. without informing her that imaging showed a glioblastoma assuring her impending death. He didn't overlook the disease. He overlooked the communication. Life pro tip. When seeking a second opinion. Don't tell them it's a second opinion. You want a second first opinion. Not a confirmation of the first opinion. I have been to multiple doctors who would not contradict the diagnosis of another doctor. Even with test results that ruled out the initial diagnosis. Or confirmed a contrary diagnosis. I'm not a doctor. I'm a nurse. But not in medserg. My sister had her gallbladder out. Routine surgery. And two days later woke up at 4am in searing pain. Went to the ER by ambulance. I met her there. The ER docs were all apparently convinced she was a drug seeker and did not even conduct a physical exam beyond taking her vitals. They snowed her to shut her up because she was just yelling help me, help me, I'm dying. They did eventually do an MRI but said it was negative and sent her home. She didn't want to leave, insisted something was terribly wrong. But they said they would call security and have her thrown out. At this point I'd like to mention that she had no history of drug or alcohol abuse. She continued to get worse at home and the next day went to a different hospital. They did the workup and found that the metal clip that closed off the bile duct had cut right through the tissue and she had a large bile leak that was literally burning all her abdominal organs. She had to have 3 surgeries to fix it and was hospitalized for 9 days. Left with chronic pain from adhesions and chemical burns. When the new hospital finally acquired the MRI from the original ER visit, she was told that the leak was small but clearly visible in that image. Not a doctor, but actually the patient. I had a doctor prescribe me birth control. While in line to pay for it, I'm reading the paperwork that comes with it and learn that another medication I am on, permanently and every day, completely voids out any effect the BC would have. I went back to the pharmacist and ask about interactions. And he says I may have side effects. I ask which ones. And he says pregnancy. Pregnancy is not a side effect. It is a lifelong commitment. Then I call the doctor and ask why they would prescribe something they knew wouldn't work. And she said. But I asked for BC. Like. Yeah I did. But I wanted some that would work. Silly me for not specifying that. Patient getting anxious about numbness in his hand. It's getting more frequent and I don't want to live like this. It gets me freaked out like my hand's not there. They assumed the person was suicidal and having symptoms of panic attack, elevated breathing rate, more than tingling numbness in hands. They did a CT because I requested it. There was a lesion. They blew it off. MRI showed it was glioblastoma multiforme. Edit. Clarifying. It was missed by the ER physician assistant. The MD supervising them never spoke to me. Not even sure if they reviewed the case. Not a doctor but the patient. When I was born. I was my dad's third child, two from a previous marriage. He knew something was wrong with me because of the way I was breathing, very rapid, short breaths. When I was three months old, they noticed there really wasn't a change. The first hospital he and my mom took me to, they said that there was nothing to worry about and babies just breathe like that. He was 100% certain they were wrong. 
They took me to a second hospital. And they said there's definitely something wrong. But they didn't have the technology to help. 1986. They recommended us to a third hospital. Which was a couple hours away. Finally. The third hospital took me right in and performed surgery that day. Turns out I had 5 holes in my heart. They tried to go through my rib cage, But it didn't work. They had to crack my sternum and go directly through my chest. They took my heart out of its body and patched the holes. I'm doing wonderfully medically today. And I'm forever in their debt. Not financially. Thank you. Ronald McDonald House. Probably the worst story one can hear. My wife found a lump under her breast that was really concerning. It took her about 2 months to get a proper appointment to have it looked at. Doc diagnosed it as a cyst and fibroadenoma. She drained the lump and it was fine. Grew back a week later and was bigger. Finally after being in pain 4 weeks on end. The doctor said this is clearly not working. So we will do surgery and remove it. Upon going in for the checkup. Thinking they'd take a look at the scar and healing. It turns out that she had stage 2 a triple negative breast cancer. The surgeon was absolutely flawed. The most upsetting thing was that while her main surgeon Gino, who was fantastic, was on holiday another male doctor told her any surgery would be merely cosmetic and it clearly didn't bother her because he could touch the lump. I almost laid that doctor out in the office. When she got the diagnosis he apologized to both of us for being an asshole. Unfortunately, this story didn't end well. Despite doing 8 months of therapy, chemo and radio, her cancer returned 7 months later and ultimately led to her death after it spread to her brain and spinal fluid. So many people told me our breast cancer. That's one of the easy ones. My insert relative nobody ducking cares about here had it. She switched genus twice because they won't take it seriously. It's been 6 months now and not a day goes by where I wish I could have taken her cancer away. She was ducking 27 years old. It. First of all I'd like to thank everyone for their outreach and warm, loving comments and concerns. I've been using Reddit, which was my wife's favorite online pastime haha, <laughs> to help process everything and the support has been immense. So thank you all. To anyone facing a cancer diagnosis or even a triple negative diagnosis, do not be deterred by this story. It is not your story. Keep fighting and live for yourself. For my wife. Duck cancer. Edit 2. To everyone wondering how I am doing, it's been 6 months since she passed. Though I have been grieving for a while longer, anticipatory grief they call it, and so considering everything, I am doing well. It was her birthday on the 28th of February and she would have been 28, so the week was quite solemn but other than that, I have found ways to move forward with her, not from her, whenever I have a moment. I let it happen and then continue. I do have PTSD from her time in the hospital but I am learning to deal with it and when COVID calms down I will go to therapy. All in all, I am doing well. Enjoying life as much as COVID allows and just processing all my feelings. I miss her every day and will for the rest of my life. Edit 3. I've had a few people tell me to sue the doctor especially considering the cost of treatment. ETC. I live in Berlin. Germany and despite that unfortunate initial diagnosis her treatment and care have a been breeze afterwards. She received care from the chair at registered sign. Berlin. One of the finest medical institutions in the world and because of our healthcare system. We haven't paid a dime for any of her treatment. It's been a while and I am at peace with it all. I am not going to go down the litigation path and sue a doctor for something that happened in 2019. Though I do understand your concerns. Thank you all. I'm the patient in the story. When I was a toddler and started walking, my extended family noticed that I would waddle a lot. My parents didn't really notice it because they grew used to my funny walking but my grandma and my aunts that saw me so much less often insisted that I had a limp. So my mother asked our pediatrician about it and he reassured that it was nothing and would fix itself when growing. One year passed and it didn't fix itself. It got more noticeable. My mother asked again to my doctor. She asked for an x-ray to make sure everything was fine and the doctor bite her head off for wanting to expose me to the rays. He insisted it was nothing but referred us to a specialist anyway. The specialist suggested my parents put some wool around my leg that had the limp. Because wool would warm it up and speed up the growing process. Right. My dad finally had enough. 
It was summer and my regular pediatrician was on holiday. His partner visited me because meanwhile the limping became really bad and my parents wanted another opinion. The new doc measured my legs. There was a 4 or 5 centimeters difference between the two legs. They sent me to a specialistic children hospital to get it fixed right away. I had severe dysplasia. So severe my right hip didn't have a socket for the femur bone. 3 years and 3 surgeries later. Months of physiotherapy to learn to walk again. I was normal. If the second doc didn't catch it. I would have grown up disabled. He split up with his work partner. The first doctor. Second doc is now my daughter's pediatrician. Not a doctor. Not even a nurse. While working as a CNA on an IQ step down unit. I noticed my patient was acting strange. Asked her a few questions got some questionable answers. Thought it might be weird. As she couldn't really answer questions other than hum and hug. Her gait was weird, like a trot rather than a normal walk. Plus she was leaning. I was training another CNA and I was like no matter what you do. If you see something. Notify the nurse and chart that you notified her. The patient was having a major stroke and the nurse was too far up her own ass and her own phone to do an assessment. The woman had to go to rehab and was not a candidate for any stroke reversing drips as I had charted that she seemed off 8 hours before. The only reason anyone caught it was because the night shift nurse insisted on bedside report. The nurse I had been working with yelled at me stroke, like I hadn't been notifying her of symptoms all day. Did. Thanks for all the kind comments. Just remember to be kind to your local CNAs and try to answer some of those call lights. You'll never know how much we will appreciate and respect you for helping with the basics. I'd also like to add that in theory anyone can call a rapid but not every institution supports the policies they make. As I commented below, at this same institution I had a patient with a blood sugar in the 30s. Could not get a hold of the patient's nurse or the charge nurse. Called the rapid. Got scolded for not giving the primary nurse the opportunity to treat the patient first. I saw this type of scolding happen at least 4 times before this instance. So the message was that if a nurse doesn't call it, then you'll be pulled aside and reprimanded for doing so. It's a pretty itty hospital and I no longer work there. Medical student here, will be doctor in May. Working an ED shift we found what was probably a missed testicular torsion. Previous doctor told patient he probably had cancer. When he showed up at our ED, what he had was probably a dead testis missed at initial presentation weeks prior. People with testes, especially young men, if you have sudden onset excruciating pain, sometimes without activity, often after during activity, go to the ED immediately. It's one of the few things that would make a urologist lounging at home on the weekend turn on his Tesla ludicrous mode and go plaid to get to the hospital. Edit. Much love to urology. Edit 2. My patient experience was with a male. But indeed ovarian torsion is a similar emergency. They told him go home it's nothing to you when he came to me we barely saved him he had a ruptured appendix. Not a doctor but I've been dealing with abdominal pain since a child. Countless ultrasounds. Doctor appointments. Er visits. I was always told it was in my head. Recently had surgery for something unrelated during the surgery that had to free my appendix that was stuck to my abdomen wall and just the tip is healthy at this point. I've been suffering for years with a mild case of appendicitis and my body was pretty much just absorbing my appendix. I will have to go back to get it removed at a later surgery because it was so stuck all they could do was free it. And they didn't want to risk it at that point because it was going to cause more pain. So that was cool to find out. 2. I've got a good one, albeit sad. I was working nights and a patient came in for a nail bed repair under general anesthesia, it was a slow night, as they're anesthetizing him. He aspirates so we do a chest x-ray to see if he's got any spit blood in his lungs. What we didn't know is that prior to this emergency surgery, he'd been going to his GP for over 6 months complaining about chest tightness. They'd put him on various different asthma medications. But none had any effect on him. The x-ray showed a massive dark mass in his left lung. We kept him asleep and transferred him to IQ. His wife and 3 year old daughter were waiting for him on the ward. We had to tell them where he'd gone. Why he'd gone there. And what was going to happen. He died from lung cancer within the month. Edit. A general anesthetic is absolutely ridiculous for a nail bed repair but he refused to have it done under local. 
A commenter below rightfully corrected me, and after talking with a colleague, the dark space in his lungs was the normal lung, and the rest was whited out because they were riddled with tumors. This man was in his late 20s, a non-smoker, and I couldn't move past the situation for months after it. I'm a dentist in the UK. While I was working as a locum in an emergency clinic had a man present with a mouth of infections. He had wanted implants. Went to a private UK dentist who refused to do them due to the patient's heavy smoking and poor oral hygiene which would mean the chance of success and good healing would be limited. The patient didn't accept this. Went online and found he could go to Hungary and get the implants done. For half the price. And have a holiday. Came back and within a few weeks most of the implants are infected and he is sat in my chair. We gave him antibiotics to clear up the infection but then had to inform him that the implants would need to come out and he would need to find a specialist dentist with the necessary equipment to get that done. He was not happy. Spent all that money only to have to pay again to have them all removed. No better off and at least 10 G down. Should have listened when the first person told him no. I'm not a doctor. But RN. This happened to me, but isn't nearly as bad as most of the stories on here. When I was in college, I got to where I couldn't swallow. It started with difficulty swallowing. Progressed to me having to swallow bites of food multiple times regurgitating it. And then got to where all I could swallow was broths and mashed potatoes with no chunks. I went to the doctor multiple times, and was told every time it was acid reflux and part of my anxiety disorder. I lost 30 pounds. Was only 120 when this started, and was just generally miserable. Finally my grandma was tired of watching me be sick all the time, so she called the GI doctor herself. They said we needed a referral, but she explained the situation and they got me in the next day. Did an endoscopy and my esophagus was 95% occluded that the gastroesophageal sphincter, for some reason. Some of my primary doctor's notes ended up in my discharge paperwork. I guess they had to contact her to get my information. And she had told them it was acid reflux and basically I was being over dramatic. She stated she did not recommend them to do the procedure. Needless to say, I switched doctors. Duck that itch. Was not a fun year. I'm the patient in this story. But I still think it's worth saying. I started having horrible ankle pain when I would walk in grade school. And my doctor always attributed it to growing pains. I knew that was bullet. And so I kept annoying him about it. After multiple attempts at diagnosis. Everything from knock knees to pigeon toe to just being weak. I finally went to a specialist. He asks me to flex my ankle. And so I do. No. All the way he said. Even though I was flexing as hard as I could. I could only flex my foot maybe an inch from its resting position. Turns out, I had incredibly decreased mobility of that joint due to shortened tendons. He diagnosed me within 5 minutes, after years of my doctors brushing me off. After a few months of physiotherapy and a shoe insert, my pain decreased by a lot. Obligatory not a doctor. I'm working as a carer while I study nursing. Discovered a 90 plus year old woman had a broken hip that the nurse who assessed her after a fall completely missed. Most elderly people who break a hip will die within a year. Fast treatment is crucial and it's a pretty ducking big thing to have missed. Yet another not a doctor but my grandmother had a lump on her tongue and when she went to the doctors the person who examined her said it looked benign but didn't feel comfortable so said she should go to an expert lest it become malignant. A more senior doctor decided against that and blocked the proposition. A couple months later it is malignant and she needs half hard tongue cut out plus tonsils. I'm a dental assistant and a patient came in and his color was off. His jaw hurt and a tooth. He'd just come from the DR. Who told him to see us? I was suspicious of heart attack. I put the pulse ox on him and almost fainted myself 82% I grabbed our emergency high flow and yelled for the Eden 911. The guy was having a heart attack. The guy lived and brought me a big old heart shaped box of chocolate at valentines. I've never been so scared or angry for another person. The dentist I worked for called the MD and said. My 25 year old assistant just saved your patient's life. Another not a doctor. But my mill had all the signs of stroke, severe headache, vomiting, vertigo, vision problems, partial paralysis, but was sent home from the ER and told it was an inner ear condition that would resolve on its own. 
When it did not get better she saw her GP, who upon merely looking at her asked when she had had the stroke. When he realized it was still untreated, he immediately sent her back to the hospital. There they finally recognized that she had had a major stroke. She could easily have died and was in rehab for weeks. They then claimed that it must have happened after she was there the first time. Because, and this is really unbelievable her charge from that visit did not say that she had had a stroke. So much wrong with that statement that I don't even know where to begin.